Alright, today we're going to talk about blood transfusion reactions. So this is probably going to be one of the most important videos because this is something as a nurse, when during the blood transfusions, you're in there for the first 15 minutes and this is what you're going to be watching out for. If you want more information about blood transfusions, I do have another video that covers uh, the actual transfusion itself and indications, but this is just the reactions. So there are two uh, immediate reactions, that's why you're there for the first 15 minutes, and these are pretty severe that you want to be there for. That's acute hemolytic and anaphylactic. So acute hemolytic, acute meaning it's sudden, hemolytic meaning hemo, the blood, lytic, breaking down. The blood's breaking down. So this is typically, you can see this if there's a compatibility issue, something wrong with the ABO or the RH antigen. When this happens, all the blood cells are going to start hemolyzing and breaking up, and they're going to be clotting off different parts of the body. So you're going to have chest pain. They could be uh, because you have blood breaking down, some depositing maybe themselves around the, the heart. You're going to have flank pain because it's going to be uh, all this blood is breaking down inside the kidneys. Uh, and some of this is going to make its way to the lungs. And so there's going to be lots of uh, tachypnea and wheezing. You're going to have hemoglobin nuria, which is uh, the blood's being broken down, and so now you're uh, urinating out uh, bits of hemoglobin, the broken down stuff in the inside of the blood. The patients also could have a headache because it's depositing itself around uh, the head and the brain. Uh, hypotension because your heart's going to be having trouble trying to pump because it has all this broken blood in it, and it's not getting good oxygen, so it's not getting good cardiac output. Uh, all this stuff going on in the body is going to put on lots of pressure. Uh, lots of stress, you can have nausea and vomiting, uh, you can have chills and fever because there's all this stress going on in the body. So when this happens and you start seeing these issues going on, you stop the transfusion immediately and you go ahead and remove the, the blood tubing from the patient and grab a new set of tubing of normal saline because you don't want any of that extra tubing in the blood or the blood in the tubing to go into the patient. So you get a new set of uh, a new tube going in, you want to keep their IV going, you call that doctor right away you get some nurse to help you get some oxygen on the patient and you expect some labs. Uh, you're probably going to do tests on the blood that you gave, tests on the patient and at this point you're really just going off of what the doctor says because this is an emergency. The other emergency is an anaphylactic reaction to the blood and this is some sort of a, an allergic reaction. And so this will cause, just like any other allergic reaction, uh, wheezing, shortness of breath, uh, shortness of breath chest tightness, um, also you can get some hypotension because of all the, hor uh, the inflammation going on in the body and you can go into cyanosis because you're having the trouble breathing, you're not going to go to oxygen and you're low on oxygen. When this happens, again, stop the blood, get a new, uh, new IV tubing hooked up to the patient, get the IV running. This place, you, you, uh, at this time you can get antihistamines to kind of help fight the reaction as well as steroids to get rid of that swelling around the lungs. Um, you also can get vasopressors to help bring the blood pressure back up because the vessels are dilated from all the inflammation. You want to make sure you get O2 on them so that they have uh, the best chance to get the oxygen they can and make sure their airway stays open. And at that point also is an emergency so you'll follow any further steps from that from the doctor. Then we have two not so um, immediate, maybe these might actually be delayed, they may not be in the first 15 minutes, maybe several hours later. Just a mild allergic reaction that just has a little bit of itching and maybe their skin's a little flush. And go ahead and call the doctor right away just to be safe. But typically you'll just want to get antihistamines and finish your transfusion. With febrile, same story. Except for here you're going to kind of break into a fever and maybe have some chills. And they may still have some inflammation with flushing and anxiety. Call the doctor still, but typically you just give them some antipyretics uh, like Tylenol. And you want to do a WBC filter on the blood. This isn't so much a, re a reaction, but this is just a potential complication. This is fluid overload. So when this happens, too much fluid on the body deposits itself around the lungs. So the patient's going to have crackles, uh, shortness of breath. Uh, they may have edema uh, from all the extra fluid on their body, jugular vein distension. Their heart's trying to pump all this extra blood, so it's tachycardic. The respiratory rate is you're trying to fight through the crackles, and so the heart's are uh, the lung is beating, working uh, quicker to try to compensate. At this point, you want to let the doctor know. You expect some diuretics to help get the fluid off of the patient. And you also want to be giving uh, O2 therapy to help them as best as they can. The uh, doctor may order an x-ray to see how bad the pleural effusions are, or the liquid on the lungs. And, uh, I mean, that is blood transfusion reactions in a nutshell. That's a lot of information, but this right here is going to be very important for you.